if you'd like to convert your image gallery from something like this to this well come on in you found the right place Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name Nigel. If you've been watching these tutorials and you haven't yet subscribed, click on the subscribe button above. This tutorial is going to be about converting our single column image gallery to multiple columns. My main motivation for doing this is so we can actually put more of a demand on our image loading libraries as well as our own performance. Um, optimizations that we've implemented on the um, image gallery so we're now seeing that when we scroll up and down on the uh, single column image gallery it's, it's hard to see the differences so what I wanted to do is set up thumbnails consuming the whole display applying a lot more loading and um, if possible um, allowing us to see any differences in scrolling or not so let's make a start. What I'm going to do is just convert the single column image gallery from our tutorial series, Recycle View tutorial series, and make that into multi-column. So I'll start that now. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go into my main um, layout. And just let me just change the order of this so I can see what I'm going to be removing. Basically, I want to remove all the padding here. So what I want to do is, I, all the thumbnails, I just want to be on top of each other. So bitmaps consuming the whole display. So we can delete those. Now we go into our main activity. And I'm just going to add some variables here. Okay, the first variable is going to be the number of columns. It's easier to change the number if you want. In this case, I'm going to make three, as you saw in the demo. And my next member is going to be the image width. Let's make that a member. And I'll do the same for height. Okay, those are the only members I need at this moment in time. Next, I'm going to tidy up the Recycle View Image Layout. This should be Grid Layout. So i change that now. And now if I go to the one, and I'll change that to our column count. Okay, now one other thing down here is, as you can see here, we've got the two sizes for our cache. Because we're going to be consuming the whole display with lots of thumbnails and scrolling up and down, many thumbnails, I want to see a larger cache here. So we'll go back to our original cache and I'll just comment out this tiny cache here. Okay, now what I want to do here is just to get the width of my display and divide that into thirds and that will be my column width. Then from the width I can just work out the height as a proportion. I'm going to be taking all the pictures in the portrait mode. Right, so first step here is to get the width. So first of all I need a container here. And we're supplied with this display metrics container. Let's create the object. Okay, next step is I can pass in this object to the, um, the window manager will provide me with the functionality I need. So first of all, I need to get the window manager and get default display and then get metrics and I can pass our display metrics into that. Okay, so this will give me the total width and height of the display. 
So from there I can now get my image width, which is going to be display metrics. And width pixels. And I want to divide that by number of columns. Which will be column count. Okay, so that's my width and with my height. It's just a matter of the width and this just the ratio of what my images are taken by with the camera. So this is the ratio I use here, taking with portrait mode. Okay, so I've now got my desired width and height that I want all the thumbnails to be sized as for whatever um, image library I'm going to be loading or with my own. Okay, I need to pass this information down into the image adapter. And this will happen in two places. First place will be here. And image adapter also gets called whenever I add new images down here. Okay, let's go into the image adapter constructor. Here we are here. So we're going to pass it the two arguments. We need to change this. Let's call it image width. Okay, and let's create two more variables down, two more members here for our image width and height. And make one for height as well. And these will be ints, of course. And go back into our constructor. This is a simple matter of assigning which width. And we'll do the same thing for height. Okay, so we've now got our desired width and height that have been passed down into our image adapter. The next step here is when we do the on create view holder, instead of inflating our image view from the um, XML file, we're going to programmatically create uh, image view and then set those width and height sizes to the thumbnail in, the, in here. So we can, it's best just to comment out these lines here. The first thing we're going to do is create a new image view. And I uh, can get the context from the parent. Okay, now I need to create layout params, which is what we're going to use to set our width and height. And this in here we can pass width and height. And pass those params into our image view. Such. And now we need to return our image view to, we need to pass it into the view holder class and um, just to get that returned. That's just what we did with the commented out code. And just pass in our image view. Okay, now we need to go into the view holder and um, comment out the XML because we're just going to be using the image view that we've created here. So we'll just comment out this line here. And it's best to cast it again. Okay, that should be now okay. 
Now we also need to pass our desired thumbnails, widths and heights down into the bitmap worker task. And so, first of all, we are using Picasso, so we can just comment out Picasso. I will have to resync my library, no doubt. Never mind. And we'll re-enable our um, optimization code. Okay. So what we need to do here is pass into our bitmap constructor the image view width and height. So we'll do that here. Image view width. Okay, that's fine. Now we need to go into the bitmap worker task constructor and just add those and initialize our target image view width and height. Okay, let's modify this. These can no longer be finals. So we'll just change into statics. Make it private. And remove these values. We'll initialize them in the constructor. Let's do the initialization. Okay, that should be it. Um, don't see any faults in the code. Okay, so let's try running this and see what happens. Okay, let's start recording display. Okay, you will see it here. We've got, it's difficult to get rid of the reflection here. Apologies about that. So, as you can see, I've got my desired effect. As I scroll down, the images are being loaded into the bitmap. This is going to be slower than what you will see on optimization libraries because we don't have any sort of um, background advanced image loading at this moment in time. Once I load to the bitmap, yeah, scrolling's okay. There's quite a few images here. I will have to add some. So, yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't have been able to put this application onto the original Recycle View image gallery, which doesn't have any optimizations. As soon as the application would start up, I'd get an out of memory error purely because loading so many th thumbnails, full size thumbnails without sampling would cause that problem. So, this is what I want to use to start now testing on all the image libraries. It's going to put a lot more pressure on the li libraries and um, if one's a bit more performant than the other, we might see that in this application. We wouldn't have noticed anything else in the other application. Okay, let me stop this recording. Okay, as with these tutorials, we're just going to put some breakpoints just to step through the code changes we made, just to reinforce what we've done. I'll open up the project so I can see where I am. Okay, we started off in the um, onCreate function in the activity. And so we'll just put a breakpoint here. This is, we will see where we're getting our width and the height from the uh, display width. Next, we'll go into the image adapter. And just gonna oh, okay I'll put a breakpoint in the view holder put one in the view holder on create and I think I'll just put one inside where we're calling the bitmap worker task and I'll put a final breakpoint just in the constructor here that should be plenty okay let's run debug
Okay, we're at display matrix. I'm mainly just curious to see what my width and height are going to be. So width is 256. And height is 341. Okay, I'll carry on executing. Okay, we're now in the image adapter where we're initializing our variables, width and height. And we'll carry on executing. Okay, so in our unlong create view holder, we actually programmatically create our view. So first of all, we'll create the image view object. And then the layout parameters where we can pass in our width and height and set those parameters to our image view and then pass our image view into the view holder. And carry on executing. And so once we're ready to assign a bitmap to our image view, um, we get called inside the oh, onbind view holder. And basically, we're going to pass our image view width and height for sampling in the bitmap worker task. So we can carry on executing. And there we have the initializations of the width and height, which is passing our desired dimensions of the thumbnail to do in sampling so we only load a lot smaller image. Okay, let's start removing these breakpoints. And as you can see here, it's debug mode, and we're loading the images into cache now, as is happening. And if we scroll back up, once it's in cache, the scrolling is quite comfortable. Okay, that's it for converting a single image gallery or creating a multi-column gallery. As I said at the very beginning of this tutorial, the main motivation for me is so I can put a lot more loading and demand on the image gallery, on the image libraries that I've been running for the performance tutorial series. So that, that was my reason for that. And so I'm gonna be rerunning all the image libraries I've tested so far on the single column gallery on this gallery. So. Those will quickly follow after this. So I'll do Glide and Picasso first, and then there's a bunch of other image galleries I need to test as well, but I want to do it on this image gallery, which will put a lot more pressure. Anyway, that's it to this tutorial. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And that's all for this one. Bye for now. On the device. So it successfully started up in the new image gallery. Let's try scrolling and see what happens. Okay, there is preloading here. We've got preloading, we've got cache being loosed, and it seems to be scrolling okay.